Welcome to the Coin Bureau Weekly Crypto Review. Here are this week's top headlines in the crypto news. Ethereum upgrade incoming. Altair aims to prepare the beacon chain for Ethereum's transition to proof of stake. Everything you need to know. Two ETFs down, how many more to go? Bitcoin futures ETFs take the stock market by storm, but institutions and individuals want something more. Is this the beginning of another bull cycle? Accelerated adoption. Walmart begins rolling out its first Bitcoin ATMs. PIMCO plans to buy more crypto, and Spanish banks prepare to offer crypto custody services. What does this mean for the crypto market? Facebook plus Coinbase equals crypto. A peculiar partnership between these two titans seeks to bring stablecoin remittance payments to Guatemala. Is Facebook trying to become a crypto company? Lawsuits, lawsuits everywhere. New York's Attorney General serves several crypto lending and borrowing platforms as Terra serves the SEC for serving Terra founder Do Kwon. Making sense of the madness. China FUD turns into FOMO. Chinese authorities ask for public input about their recent crypto mining ban, and Evergrande gets back to building buildings. Why this could be a precursor to more all-time highs. Inflation in every nation. Twitter founder Jack Dorsey declares hyperinflation imminent, while JP Morgan pins Bitcoin's rise on inflation highs. How to protect your purchasing power. And a closer look at a possible crash in this week's crypto market forecast. All this and more in just a moment. Good morning, afternoon or evening. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Guy and what you're about to see is educational content, not financial advice. You can find any topics you're looking for specifically using the timestamps in the video timeline. And now for today's top stories. In two days' time, Ethereum will undergo its next upgrade called Altair. In contrast to previous Ethereum upgrades, Altair will not make any changes to the Ethereum blockchain we are using today. Ethereum's Altair upgrade is the first mainnet upgrade for the Beacon Chain, the proof-of-stake blockchain which lies at the core of Ethereum 2.0's architecture. According to Ethereum developer Tim Bako, Altair will do three things. First, it will introduce light clients to the beacon chain to facilitate validator operations. Second, it will increase slashing penalties for validator misbehavior or inactivity. And third, it will lay the groundwork required for the merge. Now, the merge is when Ethereum's current blockchain plugs into the beacon chain for consensus. This will transform Ethereum from a proof-of-work blockchain to a proof-of-stake blockchain. The merge has been tentatively scheduled for early 2022, though it's worth pointing out that it was originally scheduled for the end of this year. The delay might be due to the issues Ethereum experienced after the August hard fork, which introduced partial fee burns to the Ethereum blockchain. And speaking of which, Ethereum has burned over 600,000 ETH worth more than $2.5 billion at the time of shooting this video. This deflationary pressure on ETH supply, combined with the low balance of ETH on exchanges, means the hype around the Altair upgrade this week produced an ETH pump. This ultimately depends on what's happening with Bitcoin, though, and Bitcoin has been busy. Last week, we saw two Bitcoin ETFs list on US stock exchanges. The first was the ProShares Bitcoin Futures ETF, which listed on the New York Stock Exchange on Tuesday. The second was the Valkyrie Bitcoin Strategy ETF, also for futures, which listed on the NASDAQ on Friday. As I mentioned in my recent video about Bitcoin's first ETF, the ProShares Bitcoin Futures ETF was hot out of the gates and nearly broke the record for an ETF's trading volume on its first day. ProShares is now pushing the Chicago Mercantile Exchange to eliminate the monthly limit on the amount of Bitcoin futures contracts it can buy for its ETF given that it's already used 76% of its allotted amount in the first week. As for Valkyrie's Bitcoin strategy ETF, the picture was not as pretty. Prices dropped around 3% in the first hour and continued to fall until the markets closed. 
By the sound of it, Valkyrie's CEO, Leah Wald, couldn't be happier. And I suppose that's partially because she knows where the money will flow if the limit on ProShares' futures contract allocation is not increased. Now, I will quickly point out that Valkyrie almost managed to squeeze the ticker BTFD past the SEC, which is, of course, short for buy the f***ing dip. Now, unfortunately, it didn't work, so the ETF ticker is just BTF. But they have earned my undying admiration for trying, though. Bitcoin's price saw a predictable rise in response to these listings and even managed to hit a new all-time high of 67k, which I called in last week's crypto market forecast. Just saying. Now, this is certainly good news, but Bitcoin's first ETFs would have had a more profound effect if they'd been backed by actual BTC instead of contracts on a futures exchange. This physically backed or spot Bitcoin ETF is what all the big investors are waiting for, because the direct buying pressure a spot Bitcoin ETF would create for BTC could send it well above 100k. As I've mentioned many times before, I believe a spot Bitcoin ETF will mark the top of this bull market cycle, and I maintain this theory. That's because despite the hype around Bitcoin's ETFs and BTC's impressive price action, Google's search trends suggests retail engagement remains low, and on-chain indicators suggest we still have a long way to go. This hints to me that the crypto bull market will continue into early 2022. And though this was not my initial thesis, it was the projection of some of the other crypto YouTubers I watch. And you can see who those are by clicking the link up there in the top right. Besides Bitcoin's ETF listings, another big bullish announcement that happened last week was Walmart's plans to install 8,000 Bitcoin ATMs as part of a pro-crypto pilot program. The first of these Bitcoin ATMs were installed over the weekend, as reported by Coindesk. Now, rather than bringing in new hardware, Walmart is leveraging existing hardware available to its customers, specifically Coinstar machines that let you trade in coins for bills or gift cards. I myself have happy memories of pouring my shrapnel into these babies when I was a young rascal. Now, Coinstar has partnered with CoinMe to make it possible to buy BTC using cash at its machines, though doing so requires KYC. While this announcement caught many by surprise, it was somewhat expected given that Walmart was looking to hire a crypto product lead back in August. Walmart's Bitcoin ATM pilot also underscores just how high retail demand for crypto is in the United States, and there's even more FOMO happening at the institutional level. On the same day Bitcoin hit its new all-time high, PIMCO announced that it was looking to increase its exposure to crypto. Now, for those who don't know, PIMCO is one of the largest asset managers in the world, with over $2 trillion in assets under management. In an interview with CNBC, PIMCO's chief investment officer specified that PIMCO is interested in decentralized finance, suggesting that it could integrate or even invest in DeFi protocols in the future. Meanwhile, in Spain, private banks are waiting for clarification from the Spanish central bank on what information they need to provide to offer crypto custody to their clients. In June, the Spanish central bank had initially said that it would create a registration form for any banks looking to dabble in crypto, but the registration portal has yet to open. According to Spanish newspaper El Pai, some of the largest banks are fed up with waiting and are pushing their compliance departments to find a way for them to offer crypto services in a compliant manner. These and many other developments suggest that we have yet to see the rubber hit the road, so to speak. Institutions are still sidelined when it comes to the crypto market, and though exchange-traded products help, the real adoption will come once crypto custody solutions become more common among legacy players. Now, I'll be doing an in-depth video on crypto custody later this week, so stay tuned for that. If you need more evidence of just how intense the crypto FOMO is at the institutional level, look no further than Facebook's recent partnership with Coinbase. For those who don't know, Facebook has been trying to get its own crypto project off the ground for years now, and to say that the project is a shadow of its former self is an understatement. As I mentioned in my video about Facebook's Libra, the project rebranded to DM after getting reined in by regulators, and since that time, it's abandoned its plans for global domination and turned its focus to developing a digital dollar in the United States. Not surprisingly, DM is struggling there too, which is why Facebook is taking an alternative route with its crypto strategy. 
Facebook's crypto wallet is called Novi, and Novi is technically the entity that has partnered with Coinbase to pilot crypto payments. This partnership will see selected users in the United States and Guatemala send remittances using the USDP stablecoin issued by Paxos. Naturally, politicians aren't that happy, and they even sent a letter to Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg insinuating that he pull the plug on Novi's partnership immediately. Now, little do they know that Mark is living in his own world now, quite literally. Facebook has begun hiring thousands of employees to build its upcoming metaverse. As part of this pivot, Facebook is going to get a new name, which will be revealed by Mark this Thursday. Mark, if you're watching, my suggestions are Soylent Corporation, Cyberdyne Systems, or Wayland yutani Happy to help. Now, although Facebook's metaverse pivot is probably nothing more than a ploy to collect even more of your data, it's possible that it's part of Facebook's crypto push. After all, there are many virtual worlds being built out in the crypto space, and some of them are starting to gain serious traction. One of these virtual worlds is Decentraland, which hosted its highly anticipated Metaverse Festival last Friday. And you can learn more about Decentraland by watching my video about it. Link is up there in the top right. Unfortunately for Facebook, the Metaverse won't help it escape any crypto-related lawsuits, and there's no shortage of lawsuits in the crypto space these days. Most of these lawsuits have concerned companies that provide crypto lending and borrowing services, and another two were served by the state of New York last week, with three others receiving warnings. What's interesting is that the names of the crypto lending companies in question have been redacted. So far, only Nexo has come out to admit that it was one of the two companies to receive a cease and desist letter from the New York Attorney General. Its response was that it doesn't provide services to US citizens in New York, so there's no way it could have broken any laws in that state. Celsius seems to have been one of the three crypto lending companies that received a warning, given that it issued a public response stating that it was, quote, working on providing regulators in New York with information about our business and offering. Now, the crypto lawsuit that's really caught everyone's attention, however, is Terra's lawsuit against the Securities and Exchange Commission. Here's how that happened. Now, some of you might remember hearing about the anonymous individual who was served by the SEC during Masari's mainnet crypto event in New York back in September. It turns out that this anonymous individual was Do Kwon, founder of Terra. The SEC wants him to come in and talk to them about Mirror Protocol, a DeFi protocol that lets you trade synthetic stocks using Terra's UST stablecoin. The SEC also threatened to sue Terraform Labs, the South Korean company that built Terra, if Doe & Co didn't comply with their request for information about Mirror Protocol. Now, what's crazy is that Terraform Labs has turned the tables on the SEC by suing them first, alleging they have no right to serve Doe Kwon nor Terraform Labs. According to Coindesk, Terraform Labs seems to have a solid case, and it would be amazing if someone with legal experience did an in-depth analysis of this lawsuit. Now, in any case, Terra's lawsuit against the SEC could help other crypto projects that are in the same boat, and it might even help Ripple win its own war against the SEC. And you can find more about that in the top right. On the topic of unexpected news, another headline that blew people's minds was the announcement that Chinese authorities are asking for public input about China's crypto mining ban. Now, obviously, this implies that Chinese regulators are rethinking their decision, and I reckon that's reasonable given all the tax revenue China has lost because of its crypto crackdown. Whether or not they backtrack could be determined by the end of the year, as Chinese authorities will only be taking public comments until November the 21st, after which point they will produce a decision. The real question is whether China would ease off on its citizens' abilities to hold cryptocurrency. And though this is unlikely, it is a possibility. Now, if that wasn't crazy enough, Evergrande somehow managed to scrape together the dollars required to avoid a default over the weekend. And not only that, but Evergrande has even resumed construction in select cities, suggesting that the catastrophic collapse Evergrande was supposed to cause may never happen. Now, this isn't all that surprising, given that there is too much on the line. While the Chinese government may be unwilling to bail out Evergrande, over-leveraged investors in China are probably opting to do it themselves. 
This is good news for the crypto market because an Evergrande default would have popped China's real estate bubble, leading to a domino effect that would have crashed the global economy. With Evergrande back on its feet, it looks like it's smooth sailing for the markets at the macro level, including crypto. Now, although we're out of the woods for now, we could find ourselves in the wilderness once again, which is why I recommend watching my video about Evergrande when you have the time. It'll be in the description. Now, as amazing as it is that Evergrande hasn't burst the real estate bubble, it also means that the insane inflation we're seeing in housing and elsewhere will only continue. If you're wondering where this inflation is coming from, a groundbreaking study from the San Francisco Federal Reserve has identified the origin. A massive increase in the money supply. <laughs> Who would have thought? Now, in all seriousness, though, it looks like central banks around the world are realizing they've run out of road to kick the can down. Here in the UK, the Bank of England has admitted that inflation is only going to get worse, and it's the same story everywhere else. The simple solution would be to increase interest rates. But as I've mentioned before, this won't happen because too many people are dependent on that easy money juice. As pointed out by Joe Brown at Heresy Financial, it looks like politicians are looking for excuses to remove any officials at the Federal Reserve who are thinking of increasing interest rates for this reason. That's another topic I'll be exploring later this week, and I promise you it's going to be very spicy. Anyways, according to JP Morgan, runaway inflation is the real reason why Bitcoin is pumping. Institutions see BTC as an inflation hedge, and they're piling into it to protect their wealth. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey weighed in over the weekend, warning that, quote, hyperinflation is going to change everything. It's happening. A Nigerian fellow responded by saying inflation is running hot at 16% in Nigeria, to which Jack replied, quote, it will happen in the US soon, and so the world. Now, before you panic, it's important to point out that inflation and hyperinflation are two very different things. As I mentioned in my video about the different crypto bear market scenarios, hyperinflation is psychological. It's the point at which the average citizen stops believing in their national currency. Moreover, hyperinflation assumes that the underlying productivity of the economy continues to grow. Yet this isn't currently the case due to a disease which shall not be named. The kind of hyperinflation we could see real soon is called stagflation. And if you're wondering how you can prepare, I happen to have a whole video about that, which you can find up there. Yep, top right. Turning to the charts, we can see that BTC has begun the decline I also predicted last week. In case you haven't noticed, BTC tends to crash at the end of each month. This is due to options expiries, which just happen to overlap with FUD that often comes out around that time. The scapegoat we're likely to see this week is the release of the FATF's finalized crypto recommendations, which is scheduled to occur on October the 28th, the day before the Friday options expiry. In terms of target, it looks like we could drop down as low as 54K before heading up higher. And given the insane amount of leverage traders we've taken on, we could see a temporary drop below that level, which will be nothing short of terrifying. It looks like the reversal date will be November the 16th, which is when Bitcoin's taproot upgrade is scheduled to take place. Note that the last time Bitcoin saw an upgrade was in 2017, just a few months before the top of the bull market. Just saying. Now, this week's winners are Shiba Inu, OKX Token, Nexo, Thorchain, and Zcash. Starting with SHIB, there isn't really all that much to say because SHIB is a meme coin whose pumps are damn near impossible to predict. Some are saying the present pump is due to Elon Musk. Others are saying it's due to all the new exchange listings for SHIB. And diehard SHIB fans are saying it's because Robinhood is about to list SHIB. Indicators suggest SHIB is overdue for a correction. But as we all know, meme coins have a habit of defying logic. Exchange tokens like OKX's OKB fall on the other side of the spectrum in that their price action is fairly predictable. As I mentioned in my video about exchange tokens, OKB and its ilk are essentially designed to go up in value over time due to their fee fueled buyback and burn tokenomics. As far as I understand, the reason why OKB is pumping is because it hasn't been as quick to shuffle Chinese users off its platforms, unlike other cryptocurrency exchanges, namely Binance. 
Nexo is next on the list, and I'll start by saying that Nexo's price action looks a bit suspicious. Even so, there have been a lot of bullish updates for Nexo, namely the addition of a market and news section to its app and the introduction of a promotion for Polkadot lending. If you want to see how Nexo stacks up against other crypto lending and borrowing apps, I'll leave a video about that down in the description. Then there's Thorchain, whose RuneCoin is rallying in response to the resurrection of Thorchain's DEX operations, which had been down since the summer. Rune is still only about halfway to its all-time high, but it's on the right track. We're a bit overbought at the moment, but I could see Rune rising to the $15 resistance range in the coming weeks if it isn't there already. I'll also be doing a Thorchain update in the coming days, and believe me when I say that's a video you don't want to miss. And lastly, we have Zcash, which you'll recall was a weekly winner in the last crypto review due to the introduction of Grayscale's Zcash Trust. I suspect the pump we're seeing this week is coming from institutional investors who are buying into said trust. Zcash also participated in the first ever Global Encryption Day event on October the 21st, which featured speakers such as Edward Snowden. Now, I should caution that Zec appears to be very overextended, and it's very unlikely that it will sustain this trend. If it does, though, the next stop is around $220. And that's all for today's Coin Bureau Weekly Crypto Review. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe button, and bell icon too. If you want more of me, head on over to Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram to get a sneak peek behind the scenes. If you join my Telegram channel, you'll get the daily crypto updates you crave, and signing up for my weekly newsletter is a great way to get the tools, tips, and tricks you need to get paid. And of course, you can support the channel by heading over to the Coin Bureau merch store and picking up a shirt or hoodie or both. Links to all these resources are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in next week's episode.